Hey, I'm Tristan, I'm the founder of WheelWorks. One of the questions I get asked a lot is about Road Tubeless and where are we at with Road Tubeless. Road Tubeless has been around for a long time now. I remember trying the original Hutchinson Fusion 3 tires back in 2009 and they were terrible. They felt like two bits of garden hose wrapped around your wheels filled with concrete. They were just absolutely horrendous to ride. But Road Tubeless as a concept has had a lot of buy-in from the big tire manufacturers and has had a lot of buy-in from wheel and rim manufacturers like us. And because of that, things are changing. There's been quite a few years where there hasn't been a lot of progress, where things haven't got a lot better, but then in the last couple of years, things have come a long way. And a big part of that is with the new Continental GP5000 tubeless tires. So, if you're a road cyclist, if you are curious about road tubeless, and if you're riding a tire that's sort of 25, 28, 30 millimeters in um, width, then this video will explain the pros and cons and whether you should be going to road tubeless. Hint, you probably should be. First up is weight. What's the weight difference between a regular clincher tire and a road tubeless tire? Well, not much. A uh, regular clincher tire plus an inner tube is roughly the same weight as a tubeless tire filled with sealant. The tubeless might be a little bit heavier, but it's not going to be significant. And that's for a like for like. If we're comparing a normal GP5000 to a GP5000 tubeless, for example. If we're comparing your handmade in Belgium cotton uh, clinchers to something more durable like a GP5000, then of course the handmade cotton things are going to be lighter. But that's not a fair comparison. Rolling resistance. This is one of those old wives tale, uh, so much false information out there that it's not even funny. So all of the information that I've seen that's been done in laboratories and on rollers and things is that road tubeless is faster than both a clincher and a tubular tire. So just think about that for a minute. It's faster. It's got less rolling resistance. The other thing that's really interesting is that there's generally speaking a very small uh, energy difference between a low tire pressure and a high tire pressure. So the rollingresistance.com has the GP5000 tubular and they've got a 2 watt rolling resistance difference between 60 psi and 120 psi. Now, I mean, we kind of live in this world of marginal gains where 2 watts sounds like a lot, and it definitely is. If, if someone could give you 2 watts, that would be amazing. But if you think about the roads that we ride on down here in New Zealand and Australia, they're not the billboard smooth blacktop of Europe it's really easy to waste more than one or two watts simply by bouncing up and down and trying to hold onto the bike around corners and it, and it just trying to buck you off the whole time. So think about that. Drop your tire pressures. Don't worry about the extra watt of rolling resistance that you might incur because what you're actually going to end up with is a much smoother ride and overall much better comfort and lower energy expenditure. Suppleness. This is how smooth does your bike feel with the tires on it. Anyone that's come from the old school of handmade tubulars knows that suppleness is super important. So where are we at with road tubeless? Well, if we compare a regular clincher tire with its tubeless compatriot, generally speaking, they're about the same. I find that generally speaking, the road tubeless feels a little bit harsher at the same pressure with all things being equal, but it's not a huge amount. And despite feeling that a little bit harsher, I think overall road tubeless is worthwhile because of the punch resistance and all the other stuff, the rolling resistance that goes into it. Ease of installation. This is where road tubeless definitely loses out to normal clinchers. Anyone that's tried this has probably come away with bloody thumbs, sore fingers. It can be really, really tough to fit a pair of tubeless tires onto a tubeless rim. There's a few reasons behind that. Rim manufacturers have made their rims slightly bigger because they don't want tires blowing off of them. And tubeless tire manufacturers have made their tires smaller because they don't want them blowing off of rims. The end result from that is a big rim, a small tire, and it can be really difficult. We've taken some steps with all of our Maker, AR, and SL wheels to make sure there's a really deep gutter in the, in the rim, which helps, and also to have the bead height as low as possible. Those two things make it a lot easier to fit a road tubeless tire. However, it's still going to be harder than a regular clincher tire. If you're thinking about buying a set of wheels from us, you'd like to try road tubeless and you're scared of this tire install thing, just let us know. We'll sell you a pair of tires and fit them with sealant ready to go. So when they arrive, you can put them on the bike and ride them. Tubulars are probably the most safe tires. They are glued to the rim, and if you get a flat tire, you can continue to ride with a flat tire for a long, long time. This is historically why the pros have used tubulars. They can basically keep riding until their neutral support car comes up. Tubulars do have the risk where the whole tire gets peeled away from the rim, but it's pretty low. 
Regular clincher, you punch her, the tire goes flat quite quickly, and there is a risk that the tire will come away from the rim, but it's pretty low. Road tubeless, I reckon, is the, the most safe of all of these. First of all, you're far less likely to get a puncher, and then if you do, the tire is, generally speaking, tighter fit onto the rim, so it's far less likely to come out. And even if, it's not, uh, even if the sealant's not gonna work 100%, the deflation rate is still gonna be a lot slower and give you more time to safely stop than it will on a regular clincher. So what happens if the tire gets cut? Well, if the tire and the sealant are doing their job, not much. And you can see from this video, we took a GP5000, it had Stan's race sealant in it, and stabbed it. Pull it out, this is a, a, a hole that's bigger than a building nail, bigger than a screw, and the sealant just sealed it up. Sometimes you'll see a tiny little dot of white sealant that comes out, and that's just the sealant as it gets pushed through by air pressure, sealing up in the tire and completely doing its job. It's not until, often, it's not until you take the tire off when it's worn out that you realize how many small holes are in it that the sealant is fixed up. I've been running the GP5000, so I've had two pairs of these now that I've worn down to the canvas. I haven't had a single flat tire that stopped me mid-ride in two complete sets of tires. And that, that for me, with Wellington glass, is an absolute amazing feat. So what if the sealant can't fix the hole? Well, this is definitely a downside of road tubeless. If you get a really big slice in the tire, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have all the high pressure air squirting that white sealant, the, the wheels spinning around, the bike gets covered in sealant, you get covered in sealant, it's a mess. It sucks, I'm not gonna lie, but it happens so rarely that I think even though it's a downside, it's probably worth putting up with if and when it does happen. If you do get a flat tire and the sealant is not enough to seal it, just treat it like a normal tire. Just take it out, take the valve out, put a regular inner tube in. If it's a big cut, you'll probably wanna put a, a boot in there like a um, muesli bar wrapper or an energy gel wrapper or something like that to stop the tube coming through. Put everything back together and ride it home. The only downside is you're gonna be covered with sealant on your hands, so just spray that off with your water bottle before you touch your bar tape and away you go. Sealant makes a big difference in road tubeless. In a mountain bike tire, the pressures are quite low. We're talking like 20, 25 PSI. So there's not a lot of air force that's pushing that sealant out into the tire. On a road bike, it's obviously very, very different. You know, we're talking about 70, 80 PSI of air. So the sealant really has to do a good job of getting into that cut in the tire and being able to plug it up. We've tried a bunch of different sealants. We keep coming back to the stands race for all the road bike stuff and the regular stands for all the mountain bike stuff. Simply put, it just works better than most. Certainly the combination of a Continental GP5000 and the Stans Race sealant is almost perfect. Like I said, I haven't had a single flat tire in two complete sets of GP5000s, and I reckon that's pretty amazing. Hooked versus hookless rim beads. This is actually a really big topic and one that we're gonna do a separate video on. However, to be really brief about it, there's very little reason to have a hookless rim bead and there's a lot of reasons to have a hooked rim bead. All of our Wheelworks Road wheels all have a hooked bead for safety reasons and we're gonna keep doing that for the foreseeable future. It's gonna be years and years and years until we have safe hookless rims. So there we go, that's the pros and cons of tubeless versus non-tubeless. Which one should you go for? Well, if you're running a rim brake bike with maximum tire clearance of 23 millimeters, you probably wanna go for a regular clincher. The tubeless sealant just doesn't work at the high pressures needed on a 23. If you've got a later generation rim brake bike that'll fit 25 or 28 millimeter tires, or of course a disc brake bike where that's perfectly uh, normal, I would 100% go for road tubeless. It's more comfortable, it rolls faster, you get fewer flat tires. Honestly, it is just better. This isn't definitely not a paid advertisement for the GP5000, but it is my favorite tire. And I know that when we put those on with Stan's race sealant, we've got hundreds of happy customers that are riding around puncture free. That would be my suggestion.